So hi, I'm Anna George, Vice President of Conservation Science and Education at the Tennessee Aquarium, and I'm here with Jennifer Farr Davis, who is one of the stars of the Into America's Wild movie that we're premiering at the IMAX. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Anna, thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about what it was like to film this movie. I mean, it looked gorgeous on the big screen. And so what was that experience like for you? Well, I, you know, I'm still at the point where you kind of think it's like a hoax or a jinx when you get an email and they're like, hey, we're a major production company and we want to film you when we're in your area. So I like send it to my husband to figure out if it's spam. <laughs> <laughs> He does some Googling and he's like, no, that's legit. So I met um, the film producers in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park since that's my backyard. And I was just really struck by how professional they were and how they were really committed to telling authentic stories of the land and the people who moved through it. And the equipment they had was incredible and their skills in capturing shots was just another level. So it was really neat to see that artistry and and to see them work on it. And one of the things that struck me about this movie is it's Into America's Wild, it covers the whole country, but it felt like we were in the Southeast, which is a region that sometimes feels like it gets overlooked. So I'm sure you were happy to see your backyard represented there. I really was. I think when we talk about spectacular scenery, sometimes like the sexy mountains, the mountains that are taller or exposed, literally, they're the ones that get the pictures or the movies. But the beauty of the Appalachians is in the details and the flora and fauna and the biodiversity and all the salamanders. And so I was really happy that they wanted to showcase that. And it wasn't just the Smokies. They went to um, the coastal area of South Carolina. I know they were in San Antonio. And to see really the whole scope of the country and understand that no matter where you are, you can get outside and engage and connect. That was really powerful. And so this also just felt like a movie I needed to see right now. So here we are in the midst of the pandemic. It's been a really challenging year for so many of us and we feel so isolated. But the movie talked a lot about, you know, the loneliness that many Americans are feeling even before the pandemic started, but also how nature helps connect us. So could you talk a little bit about your experience with that and how hiking solo even made you feel more connected? As humans, we are a part of nature. And when we are out in it and we move through it, we feel this connection and we feel this sense of belonging and it takes away this like chasm of loneliness that can creep up. And this past year has been so difficult even for people who, who know that. I feel like the pandemic has just put layers between myself and my family and our friends and the outdoors in a lot of ways. So to feel like we can now start to go back out and we can begin to plan adventures and to realize why that is so important for our mental and emotional health. I mean, the movie is just like a pep rally for reemergence. Um, and it really inspires you to go out and see some of these beautiful things. So I know I need it as much as anyone else. But you are no stranger to being alone on the trail. So talk a little bit about some of your accomplishments, which are really extraordinary. I have uh, hiked and backpacked over 14,000 miles of long trails. I've hiked in all 50 states, six continents. And then, you know, the Southern Appalachians are my favorite region. And the Appalachian Trail is sort of my first love, if you will. And so I've, I've done that trail three times. And at one point I set the record, I completed it in 46 days. And that was an average of 47 miles a day. One of the things I, I actually love about having you featured in this movie is so often I go to IMAX movies and you see these adventure sports, you see kayakers, you see rock climbers in crazy places that even in the IMAX theater I struggle with. And we do get some of those really fun adrenaline sports, but we also see you out hiking which is a very different kind of accessible activity. So is, is this your entry point? Like how do you introduce someone who's never been hiking before? What are your tips for them? You know, the trail is there for anyone at, at any phase of life. And there's so many people who come to me and say, well, I'm not a hiker. And one of the questions I like to ask them is, well, have you walked on a beach? Have you been on a greenway? Do you go to a local park? Because the dictionary definition of hiking is to take a walk in a natural setting. And when you see people kind of have this recognition, almost this epiphany moment of like, wait, I, 
I do that. Like I am a hiker. And then you can just extend it from there and take it into state parks or take it to the local national forest or then a national park. And it gives them this confidence that in fact, I was made to move in nature. I am a hiker. So your kids, how are they outdoors now? I mean, I know they love the IMAX cameras clearly, but you know, was it a struggle to get them started in nature or were they just instantly Uh in love? No, it's never, I mean, struggle is not the right word, yeah. but there is some tension and it is a relationship and it's not always perfect. We have had a ton of temper tantrums on the trail. Um, you just realize that people's personalities connect differently with nature. And that's part of the beauty of it is the trail and being outdoors. It gives you what you need, no matter who you are. So my daughter is an artist and she's not really interested in forward motion and she doesn't love hiking. And so we really have to tone down our miles if we go out with my daughter and we like to bring a lot of art supplies. We like to bring books. We play pretend. She loves camping. She can hang out at a campsite all day long, loves the s'mores, loves playing in a creek. So she's definitely a nature kid but we try not to force her with too many, you know, death marches out in the woods. So then she connects that negative experience with being outside. Um, My son, when you talk about those like adventure films, he is going to be the one jumping out of planes (laughs) off cliffs, like running down trails. And that is nerve wracking. We were camping when he was one. And my husband was like, we can't do this for like another three or four years because he's going to just run into the fire, you know? (laughs) And and thankfully, like we kept with it, but um, it is an adventure taking kids outdoors. And while it is really accessible, uh, I like that there is a need to adapt. And there is this ability to see your children's personalities come out in a really strong way. And you realize that they're different and unique and special. And so that's been the blessing of it. And yes, there have been challenges, but it's been 100% worth it. You talk about your, yourself in the movie and your own self-reflection and sense of self-worth and identity and your own view of beauty. And I think that's really some interesting commentary for us to hear right now, because I think a lot of us are going through that, like, well, wait, who am I? Who am I putting on clothes for today? Like, what is the Zoom meeting I'm doing? What are these yoga pants versus do I need to wear makeup if I'm wearing a mask? So if you could talk a little bit about how the trail helped you discover what beauty meant to you. Yeah, and that is potentially, I would think, a silver lining of COVID is we let go a little bit of the importance of public perception when it comes to image. Um, But I think as a young woman, particularly, I... I had all these just um, toxic thoughts in my mind about what my body was supposed to be or where I was falling short. And when I went outdoors, it just totally changed that because number one, I was removed from popular media and and billboards and magazines and commercials. Um, I was surrounded by nature and I felt a part of that and I recognized how beautiful my natural environment was and when you feel like you belong in that type of beauty and you are a part of that beauty that's extremely powerful and then you also start to appreciate your body for what it can do and the gift of movement and motion and and what it can give you through function as opposed to like how other people perceive it or judge it and so it just flipped all these um preconceived notions and made me really fall in love with just just being human and being a part of nature. And and my body is a gift that could do incredible things. And so that experience is something that I wish we could give every human. And some of them certainly have learned it through nature, but if I could just develop a course or a present to give to every 16 year old in the US, that's what it would be. And hopefully this movie offers a little bit of it as well. Did you get to, interact much with the rest of the cast that you had or or was it really just kind of isolated pockets of filming? Well, you know, I didn't get to meet everyone. Um, I I would have loved to, but the two uh, main characters that take you across the United States, John and Ariel, you know, they're both from Native American indigenous tribes and their voice and story is extremely powerful. And then uh, another person in the movie who I was able to meet was Emma Faye, who 
uh, is death and advocate, spends her time advocating for um, people with hearing loss and trying to get them the supplies they need to be able to hear and also get them out into nature to engage. And one of the new technologies that is, is briefly previewed in the film is uh, this machine that actually allows people who are not able to hear to feel the vibrations of nature. And that is, I mean, I cried watching that part of the film, like to see kids who all of a sudden felt and heard a bird next to them or the wind through the trees. That was incredibly powerful. And so this film really focuses on, you know, we are very different across America and the landscape is very different across America. And as opposed to the messaging that I think unfortunately has been covered so often this past year about us being different and divided, this movie has a message of we are unified and we can come together despite our differences. And perhaps the best place to do that is on public land because it is our literal common ground. One of the things I enjoyed though, is how much it showed you that not all of these people who are out doing these adventure sports started just born excellent. Like they, they all started where every one of us starts, which is not knowing a thing about what you're doing. And watching some of the videos of the fails as they're learning is is also incredibly powerful and so i'm sure you went through some of that now am i ever correct in remembering that you had not ever like overnight backpacked before you started the trail i was not a hiker or a camper i didn't do too much outdoors growing up but then i had that young adult crisis where you graduate from college and really don't know who you are or what you're going to do or where you're going to go and so i i went to the appalachian trail and it was so transformative. Like, I'm so grateful that I just sort of ended up there because I didn't know what else to do. But when you go out into nature, what happened for me is it was an extremely empowering experience. And I also recognized like skills within myself and interests that I didn't know I had because they couldn't have been cultivated in an indoor setting. So an extremely transformative experience. And like you said, this is something that more and more as our culture moves away from the outdoors, people are going to discover this later in life. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's actually the beauty of it is it's never too late to get outside. It's never too late to connect with the outdoors. And at the same time, this movie is saying the sooner you can get kids outdoors, the better it's going to be for their long-term relationship with nature and all the health and wellness benefits that come from spending time in a natural environment. So I know it's a little difficult to plan right now, but do you have any idea what's next for you? Next trails you're going to try to hit as soon as you're able? <laughs> oh my gosh. It, you know, it really is survival for us right now. Our kids are four and eight and we own and operate two small businesses. And I think we were talking even before the Zoom talk started about just the balance of how much you can do right now during COVID. And so there's this constant feeling of it's not enough. We don't feel like our, our kids' education is enough. We don't feel like what we're giving to our work is enough. And that seems really uh, pessimistic <laughs> and a little demoralizing. But here's the upside of that. I think we've gotten to the point of instead of just trying to fight, fight, fight and do what we used to do, we are, are kind of giving up. <laughs> we're, we're in a good way, fight. giving up in a good way. <laughs> right. That's where I'm getting. Yeah. We're not going to try to, like, you know, keep hammering this like square peg in a round hole. And what we're going to try to do is probably take time this spring while our kids are still you know in virtual school and we're gonna camp in as many national parks as we can in the southeast and midwest and it will depend on covid and what is open but we are ready to just go outside because it is where we feel healthy and and happy and normal and less anxious and less stressed and so it actually feels even though you know, we work in the outdoor industry. I think it's just recently hit us that like every other American, we really need to make it a priority right now to go outside as a family. And there's a brand new national park you can hit in West Virginia too. I know. Yes. We're excited. We love West Virginia. It's great. Uh, that's a beautiful place. Oh my gosh. I love that spot. 